Well, you know our human body is an amazing machine. We can play and work and exercise the body to breaking point. But when it does break down, sometimes we may need some specific help, and that may come in the form of an osteopath. And now with me today is Mark Franklin. Now, how you doing, Mark? Good to see you again. I've caught up many times on, on various issues here at City News. But today we're talking to you about osteopaths and what they do here yes. uh, in our country. Now, at the moment, there's about 400 osteopaths in New Zealand. But when you arrived here, there was nowhere near that number. I was the 12th osteopath in New Zealand in 1979, so there's been quite a huge growth, particularly in the last 10 or 15 years. Why do you think it has grown so much? Because I know a lot of New Zealanders, we focus on physios and chiropractors and things like that. What's the difference? The difference is because osteopaths focus on whole body alignment rather than just treating an injured part. Physiotherapists and um, chiropractors and osteopaths all do manipulation but it's not just the spine. Osteopaths do the peripheral joints as well. So we deal with shoulders and elbows and ankles and other joints. When you say other joints, obviously the, um, I'm guessing that the back and the neck are probably the most uh, injured parts of the body? They'd be the most common, yes. Yeah. Generally the lower back for men because they tend to do more physical work and more often than not the shoulders and neck area for ladies. And if someone, say, just for instance, had a motorbike accident and they had to come and see you, and say they put their hips out or you know broken a leg or something. What sort of stuff do you do with the actual patient? Do a full case history, a full body examination, try and find out how exactly they hurt themselves, what's gone wrong, and if necessary, we'd refer them to some other practitioner for treatment. Now, if someone was to come and see you, what's the sort of like the average length that you'd spend uh, treating them? For the first visit, probably take about three quarters of an hour by the time you've done a proper examination and you've got all the details that you need to record. Yeah. After that, half an hour or so for a treatment. Now, I understand uh, osteopaths have become more popular as time has gone on, especially in the, in the last 20 or so years. What do you think that is? Because we're successful when it comes to treating problems. <laughs> well, that's easy, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Now in New Zealand we mentioned there's 400 osteo osteopaths and there's many more coming into the country, so do you think New Zealand uh, as a whole needs to train up more osteopaths? I think we're training enough at the moment. There are approximately 100 in training at the moment at Unitech in Auckland, which is the only training institute we have in New Zealand. Um, any others that are needed generally come from England. Now, after you've finished with the patient, do, you, do they ever give you a call back and say, hey, look, you've done an amazing job, I feel pretty good, and they don't come back and see you again? That can happen. Uh, sometimes you don't see people again for another 10 or even 20 years. But uh, you know, injuries can happen at any time and people may need some ongoing treatment. So sometimes you have clients who might come once a month just to help keep them just for maintenance. in good tune. Yeah. Yeah. What other things do you think people should do to help their body stay in tune and, and keep it fit? More exercise yeah. and a good diet. I think that's pretty standard. Most people know that, but I think it's yeah. more putting it into practice that's probably the hard yeah. part. But research has shown that um, prolonged driving and prolonged sitting is not good for the, your health, so you need to get up and move around as often as possible. Hmm. Uh, you can actually get computer programs that will remind you to do that. <laughs> Maybe we need one in our office too. Stop, yeah. <laughs> stop us working too hard. Yeah. Isn't that right, boss? <laughs> 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 and um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is that um, over the last eight years, there's been three million claims at ACC. Uh, with various conditions, mainly to do with the back and the neck, like you mentioned. What sort of things, apart from the exercise that you mentioned, that we could do to prevent those sorts of injuries? Altering people's work habits, how they do things, and sometimes it, it, the equipment that they use. I think uh, any engineer who makes a machine should be made to work on it for a while. <laughs> he might redesign it then. So regular breaks? Yeah. 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 But ergonomic design of equipment. Uh, some people have tried um, using office desks that allow you to stand and work, for instance, instead of sitting all the time. There are advantages in that. What about your clients? Are they generally male or female? Have you got a good, a good split? Roughly 50-50 split. Yeah. And is there any particular injury or, uh, or pain that people see you to do with their gender? More commonly, it's a lower back problem with the men because they tend to do more physical type of work. And more commonly neck and headache problems with the ladies because of the type of work that they do. Now coming up this week, Mark, is Osteopathy Week, Awareness Week. So what sort of things will you guys be doing to celebrate, you know, and obviously promote uh, osteopaths in, this, in the city? The main thing is just promotion, and letting people know what we do, where we are, and how to find us. And you can find us on the Osteopaths New Zealand website, 
or you go to the Osteopathic Council of New Zealand's website, which is the registering body for every osteopath in the country. Mark, what are the, some of the uh, misconceptions that you see in your day-to-day -day work life? Well, I get people who come to me and say they've had a slip disc, but discs don't actually slip. They can rupture or they can herniate, which are two different ways of damaging it. Ouch. But <laughs> they can be treated. So apart from uh, manipulation on the table, what sort of things do you advise your patients outside, you know, when they go home, maybe with like a heat pack or massage, or is there other things like that? Exercises and changing the work habits. And that's it. Pretty easy, really? Yeah. All right, good stuff, Mark. Appreciate your time. Thank you.